Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. students i welcome all of you back to the lecture series on uh, introduction to science fiction studies this is the last lecture in this series and i hope you have enjoyed all throughout the way all the lectures that we have uh, gone through together has of course enriched our knowledge source but also has contributed have contributed to science communication we discussed science communication very briefly which we will discuss more in our advanced course so for now let us have a small uh, reminder uh, a recapitulation of all the things that we have come across so far so before we move on to scope for advanced studies in science fiction let us understand what is science fiction and its difference with science in fiction so these two differences i'll give you a very short kind of idea science fiction is uh, a story a narrative a plot line where characters are there and they are interacting with each other and at the background there is some kind of technology some kind of futuristic uh, aspect that is happening that is taking place suppose uh, a kind of um, let's say the portal guns the wormholes that are getting created the time lapse the time travel all of these things these are part of theoretical physics theoretical physics is a domain where everything is understood in the basis of the theories that are given by scientists if the theories get proved then only we can consider that yes uh it is a viable kind of thing that is happening however in theoretical physics it is a very you know uh, the chances of proving the theory are very low why because you cannot create a black hole right in your um, laboratory you cannot create a wormhole in your laboratory or those are very big uh, astrophysical phenomena so the, in that case you will have to be uh, only sure of it through mathematics that this is what is happening for example long before the black hole uh, was seen by the event horizon telescope it was uh, theorized by uh, stephen hawking right so when stephen hawking was talking about black hole and hawking radiation he did not actually see it but he theorized it so the aspects of black hole or wormhole or time travel which are given or which are uh, taken recourse to in fiction in stories those are actually science fiction stories right so the science here has not been proved they are under theoretical blame right so if it is proved if there is a fact that is happening around us in our universe in our earth and that particular thing is used in fiction then that is called as science in fiction and it is not theory it is practical physics because here you have something which is actually a thing that is um, around you in your area in your uh, domain on this planet that can happen on this planet for example take the uh, example of the movie gravity gravity is something which is very natural which is every day we think um, of gravity in terms of uh, newton uh, and his apple right newton was sitting under an apple tree and an apple fell on his head and instantly he discovered gravity or that is what the story is anyway so gravity is a natural phenomena whenever there is a story which includes the aspects of gravity for example a spacecraft which is traveling at a very high speed is experiencing 5 g's that is 
five times the gravitational pull of the earth so that kind of pressure uh, is being exerted on the astronauts and they are fainting so at that point of the storyline the gravity is science in fiction right not science fiction it is not science fiction it is science in fiction so this these are the two differences i'll give you more examples like let's say uh, nowadays we are talking about androids and artificial intelligence right so if a movie or if a plot or if a um, let's say novel takes up the story of uh, a, a scientist who is trying to work on artificial intelligence all the theories that the scientists uh, is aware of is on the public domain and he is applying all those theories in his laboratory and creating a machine the, this is science in fiction at this point in the story it is science in fiction but as soon as the artificial intelligence being gets created and that uh, robot or ai becomes sentient and tries to do all sorts of trouble that becomes science fiction okay so because ai does not have the sentience of human beings human beings have a sense of their self what they are they have memories they have the past they have the hopes for the future but ai cannot have all those things but still if the ai is doing certain things then we can consider it as a part of the science fiction that it is referring to a future that might happen might not happen right okay so after this we will talk about the various authors the big 3 that we have discussed heinlein asimov and clark then we have ray bradbury we have discussed all of these authors if you have a chance go back and look it up look at their works look at the awards and recognitions they have got so you will have a very clear idea of the science fiction scenario and when it became popular in the us and over the world after that we have discussed indian authors the indian science fiction scenario we discussed uh, we have talked about satyajit ray we have talked about jayant vishnu narlikar we have talked about vandana singh and there are many other authors like um, gokulanand these are the authors that have contributed hugely massively to creating this entire picture of science fiction uh, in india so after all of these things we have went on to consider the um, women and non binary authors of science fiction we have octavia butler uh, then we have um, margaret atwood uh, we have ursula k le guin all those people we have seen leo sixine these are the authors who have contributed to creating gender fluid narratives the narratives where gender constructions are uh, challenged uh, using the science fiction trope right then we move on to uh, science fiction utopia versus dystopia we have discussed who are the authors who create utopia the dystopian uh, fictions are more in number than the utopian fictions where did the word utopia come from how is dystopia relatable to our everyday life there we also studied wells hg wells we have studied stevenson we have studied huxley uh, and of course we have studied verne all these four authors we have looked at and their works and their contribution Uh, to the field of science fiction actually these were the earliest at least huxley came on later but verne stevenson and wells these three authors were already there and they were contributing a lot and they had influences on arthur c clarke isaac asimov and ray bradbury as well as um, robert heinlein so these authors verne stevenson wells can be called as the uh, proto science fiction writers moving on to the uh, time travel aspect of science fiction the space time continuum of science fiction alien encounters on science fiction particularly we were talking about a lot of fun stories of that we also discussed um, the alien 
as a part of the Indian science fiction uh, genre when Satyajit Rai was talking about it. Moving on to, we in, entered the field of movies and TV series. Uh, we discussed all the nitty gritties uh, of the um, filming, the movies, how the VFX was there, the CGI was there, the green screen and the chroma key was being applied. These were the scientific technological things that were used to film these science fiction movies. However, the science fiction, those movies have talked about is interstellar travel, time travel, space travel, all sorts of things, alien encounters. So those, um, so we have discussed movies from two aspects, how they are filmed and what they are showing. Then we also talked about TV series and TV series have made science fiction, uh, uh, you know, homely word. Everybody knows about the concept. Everybody is enthralled, is intrigued by the concept of science fiction. This has gone to the millions of people who watch TV uh, on a daily basis. Thereby, the uh, concept of time travel, the concept of space travel, which would have been otherwise, you know, a long shot for common people to understand. Even they are able to get a grasp on that, those ideas, those fascinating ideas, right? So after all these discussion, now there is a time for us. It is a time for us to consider the advanced studies. From here, we have come so far. We have done the basics. We have understood what is science fiction, science and fiction, the authors that are writing, the awards that are being given, the seminars and conferences that are being held, the uh, World Fantasy or Science Fiction Association, everything we have come across. Now what? Now where do we go from here? So there is a section that is advanced studies. Let us go through that. Scope of science fiction in higher academia. So in one of the uh, presentations, in one of the lectures we have uh, come across, I was quoting a Harvard University professor who was very, um, what should I say, vocal in saying that science fiction is non-literary. That is what people think. It is less literary than other types of fiction. So how much water does that argument hold? It is to be contested. It is to be debated. But the idea that science fiction is not a serious literary genre, it is itself very dehumanizing, uh, a kind of uh, derogatory mindset that people might have due to certain prejudice. One of the most important prejudice is that science is a separate domain and literature is a separate domain. Fiction is a separate domain. Creativity is a separate domain. Let me tell you, uh, very recently, only, I mean, uh, a week before, this is uh, August 2023, a week before uh, Oppenheimer was released, right? Um, Oppenheimer was the director of the Manhattan Project, the entire nuclear facility that was, uh, um, you know, divided into several small sections who were preparing one part of the atom bomb for the United States government. Uh, during the World War II, all of those things were happening. So entire uh, responsibility was given to Oppenheimer. And Oppenheimer, what did he do? He hired the top-notch scientists around the world. And that included uh, Einstein and Feynman and people like that, right? And everybody had wonderful creativity, starting with Oppenheimer who could read Sanskrit. He actually knew the language Sanskrit and he uh, used to recite from the uh, Vedas and the Gita. And Einstein also was familiar with a lot of Indian literature. Einstein was writing with uh, uh, writing letters to Ravindranath Tagore. They were exchanging letters. There is even a picture available of both sitting together. Also, you will have Feynman. Feynman was a mastermind. He had his own ways of creating fun and uh, uh, all sorts of puzzle for all the other people in the facility. So these people, they were highly creative. They had a very original, very innovative mind. Simultaneously, the physicists who were preparing the bomb, the nuclear bomb, the atom bomb, they were also very creative and they could think outside the box. So if you want to say, they 
that imagination is something which is strictly uh, for the, the people belonging to the domain of literature, culture, arts and uh, popular media. It is farthest from the truth. It is not true at all because people, the physicists, they imagine things which we have not seen with our own eyes. Even an artist who is a very creative artist requires a kind of model, requires inspiration from the world around him or her, at least have an abstract imagination by imagining the situations that he or she has been in, in order to paint a good picture, in order to express whatever he or she is feeling. But physicists, they have this entire language of mathematics, physics, chemistry and everything and they see what we are not able to see with our uh, naked eyes or with, with our imagination. Because Stephen Hawking, who was almost paralyzed, who was actually paralyzed, he could only move uh, one of his cheek muscles. That was all he could do. So Stephen Hawking, while he was in that condition, he was able to imagine what black hole might be, what black hole would look like. We cannot even imagine celestial bodies outside moon, sun, earth and the solar system which is introduced to us right uh, in our nursery classes. We, our limitation is that, but the physicists, their limitation, sky is the limit for them. So, you will also see that the writers who, are, uh, who have composed science fiction, many of them are physicists or mathematicians or scientists. We have taken the example of Jayant Larlikar. We have other English and British authors who have uh, been in the, uh, of course, Vandana Singh, Indian scenario I'm telling you about. So these two people, they are scientists. They are actually um, contributing the field uh, to the field of astrophysics and other things. And they have written science fiction so that children of our generation, of their upcoming generation, they get to know about the possibilities of science and thereby, you know, uh, develop this kind of scientific attitude towards everything. And let me tell you, the National Education Policy 2020, which India is working, uh, has already implemented, it encourages interdisciplinary studies. Interdisciplinary studies, that means if I am having science major as a subject, I can take up literature as a minor subject or if I'm having literature as my major then I can take up science subjects as my minor subjects. So if we do not, if we do not inculcate, if we do not cultivate amongst us the scientific attitude, prejudices like casteism, racism, um, di discrimination on the basis of gender and religion and all other things will persist in the society. Right. So, uh, in the higher academia, we will be talking about, uh, first of all, about literary studies. Science fiction literature is a rich area of study that allows learners to analyze the genres, themes, literary techniques and historical context. Courses can delve into classic works, contemporary authors and various subgenres of science fiction. So, one way of looking at science fiction is from the literary point of view. Literary point of view, which includes see themes, literary techniques. Of course, the way one would write a romance novel, the way one would write a gothic novel, the way one would write a thriller novel will be slightly different from the way one would approach a science fiction novel. The science fiction work can be gothic, can be romantic, can be a thriller, uh, can be a detective science fiction, everything. But the word usage, uh, there will be vocabularies from science, uh, scientific terminologies will be used. So in order to make them uh, fit into the text very naturally, the authors have to uh, define some parameters right at the outset, develop the narrative style in such a way. And of course, historical context. When literature we are talking about, we must consider history because literature is placed in history. If literature is a product, then there are two things that are to be taken into consideration. One is the time and one is the place. 
where and when both the things are very important in history so if we are studying a work of literature let's say we are reading a poem by william shakespeare the way william shakespeare is has expressed about uh, uh, feelings the characters uh, feelings the uh, narrator the author's feelings um, about love life um, music whatever uh, that is not the way people in the post humanist in the post truth era express their feelings this is generally what we understand as post modernism the capitalistic society the consumerist society in this society we cannot use shakespearean language so the language that shakespeare is used is typical to his time and his place right so historical context is very important um, aspect that we can move forward and study in the advanced course then we have cultural studies science fiction often reflects and comments on societal issues providing a lens through which learners can explore cultural political and philosophical concepts it allows for critical examination of social norms values and beliefs so when we discuss science fiction studies cultural side is a very strong side especially when um, the novels which talk about space travel going into a different planet talking about dystopia that time that entire civilization that entire culture is seen from a different perspective the culture that the so civilization under um, observation has might not be the culture that we live in even forget about uh, alien invasion alien culture and dystopian world the science fiction stories which are composed in india might not be as uh, you know relatable uh, as this uh, to the us population as the science fiction stories composed in the us soil because in the us soil they have their own culture their own understanding of um, human relationship so the science fiction stories in their uh, territory like clark asimov and heinlein what they were writing they had a different outlook towards the american culture they were looking it from the pop side they were looking it from the imaginative side looking it from the american jewish community sides so all of those things will be then uh, relatable to the us citizen but if we are discussing science fiction let's say here um satyajit rai's bonku babur bondhu that we have discussed in bonku babur bondhu or bonku babur's friend we are talking about a village in uh, west bengal where a person is a school teacher and is getting bullied uh, and uh, the relatives are um, does not care uh, his colleagues are mad at him they ridicule him make fun of him a us person cannot relate to that because teachers do not get bullied in their culture neither teacher do teachers do have that kind of or are allowed to uh, keep their quiet when the students are creating disturbances in the classroom right so that culture is different this culture is different bullying is same and then in bonku babu's friend we have the alien trying trying to um, boost confidence in bonku babu and uh, take him uh, to a different dimension in the you know mentally give him a different perspective of life in us the aliens don't do that the aliens either they have their own understanding they try to um, they are always the superior kind of thing either they are good and they are superior or either they are bad and they are um, you know cannibalistic they feed on human flesh and this and that all sorts of things but in india you will not find that kind of situation we never can imagine an alien coming from the outside and killing people we can only imagine a friendly alien like jadoo in koi mil gaya that is the you know humanitarian side we can only imagine that we indians cannot imagine uh, grotesque things about you know things from out of outside the space so studies is a very important aspect ethics and philosophy science fiction poses ethical dilemmas and philosophical questions related to technology artificial intelligence genetic engineering and more it encourages students to ponder the moral implications of scientific advancements now ethics we have discussed already in uh, eugenics uh, and science fiction and genetic engineering we were discussing a lot of things now the point is 
when we are talking about these technologies these technologies are already here we can go for therapeutic cloning or reproductive cloning but the bioethics um, department which controls the rules and regulations of all the scientific experiments related to biological life on earth they ha have not sanctioned uh, cloning uh, for uh, the reproductive cloning at all they say that okay at an experimental level you can go for therapeutic cloning therapeutic cloning means suppose somebody's hand is cut off we can ask we can try to or a, a person can dedicate uh, the science dedicate an experiment to whether the stem cells uh, can reproduce a hand that is something that uh, the government is willing to has not given the permission but is willing to experiment with that is okay that has a certain clearance not the entire clearance but a certain clearance from the bioethics community but creation of an entire being from one person that is problematic i'm sure you have heard of the sheep called molly if not go and look up molly is the sheep the first cloned animal in the history of the human civilization molly was uh, actually a sheep which was cloned from a different one so the different one was a grown up sheep so the stem cell was taken from that 5 uh, 6 year old sheep and then another sheep was created out of that um, stem cell uh, the sheep named molly it was already 5 6 year old when it was born so it did not survive for more than one or two years because that is the average life of a sheep so if we clone a human being from a you know perfectly normal human being if that is uh, that human being is 20 to 30 year old then the clone will uh, that if even if it is a baby it will be it will start its life from 30 year onwards so that is the fun of um, the fun aspect and which is actually a dangerous aspect so if we try to experiment with natural phenomena what are the things that are likely to happen so ethics and philosophy are those um, strongholds of the civilization which stop us from messing around with the experimental attitude it is good but it is not always good as well because before we uh, understand what these things can create what are the consequences of such experiments we should not go ahead then we have artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is still at a very basic stage we cannot say that it is going to um take over the human civilization although um in many science fiction works we have seen like i robot especially where there is a, a the artificial intelligence being gets sentient we have movies like blade runner or um let's say uh, mad max fury road there we have come across some androids even in the mandalorian series we have droids even then we cannot say that they have the entire uh, upper hand especially in the terminator series the droids are uh, the machines that are coming from the future the robots the humanoid robots with uh, a mind of their own they are coming from the future trying to kill the present all of those things but this is not what actually the reality is however this stories that are being built shows or is trying to show to everybody that before taking a drastic step or even if we have the possibility before upgrading to such a society we must first consider all the aspects very properly otherwise this is what going to happen a dystopia will be created stem fields stem what is stem do you know science fiction can inspire interest in science technology engineering and mathematics that is what called as stem very you know symbolic because these are the pillars of our civilization of our society they uh, have helped to um, ease human life on this planet all those things it introduces scientific concepts and futuristic technologies sparking discussions about their feasibility and impact so science fiction like in the previous discussion only we were talking about artificial intelligence exactly that is what we are dealing with right now that these four pillars they are um, 
sparking those debates, creating those discussions so that we can take part and some kind of consensus we may arrive at in about 50 years from now. Social sciences, courses in sociology and topology or psychology can explore the portrayal of societies, cultures and human behavior in science fiction, encouraging discussions on identity, power, dynamics and social change. So, science fictions are not only meant for giving us an, a view to the scientific world, they can also act as a metaphor. I will write this word metaphor. Very easily explained, if I say, my dear students, you are like sugar to me. Are you really sugar? No, but I said you are like sugar to me. You are as sweet as sugar. So this is a simile because I am using the word like. But if I say you are sugar, you are the sun, you are the moon, you are the Jupiter, let's say. Okay, whenever I am removing that like, I am comparing you with Jupiter, sun, moon, sugar, everything. But I am not using the word like anymore so that is a metaphor so whenever say uh, next time whenever somebody thinks of uh, you because i have said you are like jupiter uh, i have said you are jupiter they might think oh okay jupiter is a very big giant planet that means this person is very big giant so some kind of comparison is there right so that is a metaphor if I say that I have traveled to a different planet, I am looking at different uh, culture, different society, different civilization, different people with different type of skin and uh, physical appearance. Is it not a kind of hint at when the colonizers went to Africa or came to India or went to other parts of the world? They also went to a different place with different um, uh, kind of landscape with different people, different skin, different physical features, right? It is, so all the alien uh, stories in a way are our understanding of uh, meeting an alien culture. We have discussed the word alien uh, multiple times in the lecture which is dedicated to alien and science fiction. So you can go and um, have a look at that section. So every time we are discussing that, Portrayal of societies, culture, human behavior in science fiction. So these things we can look into the higher academia. Then media studies. Science fiction films, TV shows and video games offer opportunities for media analysis examining how the genre shapes and reflects popular culture and influences public perception of science and technology. I'm sure you have heard of the various video games, the PC games that have been designed on actual science fiction movies. If not, you can just go and uh, type uh, video games inspired by science fiction movies. You will get a whole list of it. Starting from Spider-Man, um, Superman, the um, all the superheroes, everybody has a video game of their own. Assassin's Creed is a very popular um, movie. Uh, actually, Assassin's Creed started with a uh, game and then it became a movie. It went other way around. However, there are multiple video games based on science fiction movies. Futurism and Innovation Science fiction often envisions possible futures in technological advancement. It can inspire learners to think creatively and critically about the future, innovation and the role of science in shaping society. So, building up a futuristic attitude, building up um, a, a kind of acceptance, a kind of inclusivity for whatever possibilities there are. That is something that science fiction encourages in young learners. Science communication. Studying science fiction can enhance communication skills as learners engage in discussions about complex scientific concepts and articulate their ideas to broader audiences. Science communication is one way communicating about difficult scientific things to a layman, let's say, the one who is not at all scientifically oriented. How can I 
explain a concept as difficult as black hole or wormhole to a layman but we did it right we were talking about time travel we were talking about crispr genetic technologies we were talking about uh, space and time continuum how did we do it we did it with the help of science communication because we had the vocabulary we had the understanding and we had also the um, idea very clear in our head so our choice of words were very precise so that the idea could be properly shared with a person who does not have an idea of what i'm talking about or preconceived idea pre conceived notion even the person knew nothing about it even if i explain um the uh, einstein's field theory with the example of a fabric and a ball and how the ball presses on the fabric that is the time stay time and space continuum all of those things the person will understand because i will be able to tell that person only because of my scientific attitude once you as young learners develop that kind of scientific attitude you will see that you know other worldly things uh, uh, other prejudices that cloud your judgment most of the time they do not matter at all creative writing science fiction fosters imaginative storytelling creative writing courses can encourage learners to craft their own science fiction narratives exploring ideas of speculative fiction then we have interdisciplinary research like i said we have discussed all of these ideas so i'll just go and read it out for you so that we recapitulate it once again and move forward the interdisciplinary nature of science fiction allows for collaborative research across academic disciplines leading to innovation and thought provoking projects global perspectives science fiction is not limited by cultural boundaries it is very true because in itself it itself questions the boundaries even of the knowledge of science of human beings so how can it be contained within a cultural boundary it can be studied in international context highlighting diverse cultural representations and contributing to global literary and cultural studies so if all of the learners around the world develop an attitude towards science fiction or a scientific attitude everybody can contribute it in a kind of combined manner in a sense of togetherness with unity of course critical thinking and problem solving science fiction encourages critical thinking and problem solving skills as students analyze complex narrative and grapple with futuristic scenarios this is one of the most important things that this generation needs is that problem solving attitude you might have had you know people around you who are complaining all the time oh this is wrong that is sad this is not working that pe- person is not right this is not happening that is not happening you might have people around you even your loved ones could be uh, having that attitude but once you instill the um, a- scientific attitude in them you will see how they are very much quick in solving the problem instead of describing the problem and making a big hue and cry about the problem the first thing they will do is take a pen and a notebook and start taking notes about the situation and how that situation can be ameliorated that is the problem can be solved so reading science fiction gives you that kind of edge that okay if we are under pressure even if it is uh, happening like that no problem the first thing we must do is solve it right most of the science fiction movies which are related to space uh, uh space travel you will find one such scenario at least one such scenario where everybody is under a lot of pressure you know it is a matter of milliseconds uh, the question of life and death but the scientists they keep very cool they keep very calm and they make a very good decision right at the brink of time and everything is happy once again every problem is solved okay so critical thinking after that these are some of the literary theories that modern science fiction studies have been applying to science fiction studies that is one is marxist theory because there is a class division there is a class struggle even if we consider stories of asimov clark uh, butler ursula k le guin everywhere you will see there is some kind of hierarchy 
The most prominent hierarchy is in Huxley's Brave New World. There they have the hierarchy of Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, all sorts of people. And they, this hierarchy is genetically engineered. The babies are grown in laboratories. So if there is a hierarchy, social hierarchy, then there will be class struggle. One class will be trying to overtake the other class. One class will be trying to um, dominate the other class and such thing happens. There is always the Marxist angle, the literary angle. So when we go to the advanced course, we will be taking all these literary theories into consideration in reading and interpreting science fiction studies. So we can have a cursory look at these theories. Marxist theory, this theory examines how science fiction reflects and critiques social and economic structures, often exploring themes of class struggle, power dynamics and utopian or dystopian societies. Feminist theory, analysis of science fiction focuses on gender representation, very important, patriarchal norms and the portrayal of women. Women characters, how they are given or not given center stage in a science fiction novel tells us a lot about the attitude of the writer or the attitude of the um, historical uh, timeline when the novel was being written uh, or all the women characters, damsels in distress. These all things are very um, intriguing when we come to the gender studies and science fiction and we club them together. It explores how the genre can reinforce or challenge traditional gender roles. You, one of the um, points that we will be taking up in the advanced course is AI and gender. All the stories that have AI uh, modules or androids roaming around here and there or humanoid androids, humanoid androids, they have a certain look. Either they are looking like a man or they are looking like a woman. So what does the AI feel or how is the AI program to behave in such a way? So behavior is one of the you know, striking factors when we consider AI gender narratives uh, and um, the author's mentality towards uh, portrayal of such characters. Postcolonial theory. Analysis of science fiction investigates how the genre addresses issues of colonialism, cultural identity, resistance, particularly in works of authors from former colonized regions. So post-colonialism is uh, seen, this idea you can easily visualize when you talk about earth invasion or earth human beings going to the other planet and trying to colonize that planet one planet taking over the other planet people or civilization from far away galaxies coming and conquering more planets than they uh, you know than we have our knowledge about so all these ideas especially you have star trek you have star wars everywhere you will find this kind of idea one portion of the civilization of one planet is trying to overtake the other everywhere Structuralism semiotics. This approach analyzes underlying structures and symbols in science fiction texts, revealing the underlying patterns and meanings in the narrative. This is somewhat of a advanced studies. We will talk about structuralism and semiotics in that course. Psychoanalytic theory. Psychoanalytic analysis delves into the psychological motivations and subconscious desires of characters in science fiction works, exploring themes of identity, repression and fear. Then we have reader response theory. This theory focuses on the reader's role in interpreting and co-creating meaning in science fiction. It explores how readers engage with the text and how their experiences and backgrounds shape their interpretations. So these two points that is psychoanalytic theory and reader response theory, this goes both ways. That is psychoanalysis of the characters as well as psychoanalysis of the readers. I will be, um, you know, it is a very innovative thing that not only the reader judges the text, the text also judges the readers. That is something we might not be seeing eye to eye at this moment, but in future we will certainly develop this as a major literary genre that a story can reveal itself to a, a particular reader in a different way than another reader who has a different mindset. Right, it is, it is a natural reader response theory. So 
that way the reader uh, of course it is a writerly text and readerly text there are two distinctions which has been uh, made by some of the earlier cultural theorists but however the story can also change according to the perception of the reader narrative theory narrative analysis of science fiction examines how the genre's unique narrative structures such as time travel or alternate realities affect the reader's experience and understanding of the story i'm talking about this especially with reference to science fiction we are in a particular reality then the storyline shifts into another reality then it comes back to this reality How, what this jumping of one storyline to the other and then coming back to this one this is a problematic scenario and the readers are somewhat um, let's say bedazzled uh, dazed by this kind of experience because uh, it is very difficult for uh, some of us to keep up with the um, motivations inspiration of one timeline and then suddenly switch on to another i'll give you the example of a tv series called french if you happen to have uh, it's it's a old tv series it has the same kind of idea right formalism formalist analysis looks at the formal elements of science fiction texts such as style language and narrative techniques to uncover how these elements contribute to the overall meaning of the work what is the form of the science fiction is it a story is it a novel is it a poem is it a drama is it a picture is it a tv series is it a movie everything we have to take into consideration before analyzing it because the way a story will reveal itself is not exactly the way a tv series is going to reveal itself and it is also not same with how a poem is composed right so every genre has their own uh, affiliations um, uh, to uh, narrative techniques and forms in the formalist uh, kind of theory they uh, it is russian formalism they have this idea of um, making the familiar unfamiliar that is defamiliarization i will write it for you this is very uh, famous with especially shklovsky is there one of the pro most prominent formalists then you have zvetan todorov these are the formalism uh, propounders of formalism practitioners of formalism they have been analyzing text from the point of view of the form we will be talking all about this in the advanced course cultural studies we have already discussed it earlier cultural analysis of science fiction examine how the genre reflects and shapes popular culture exploring its influence on societal norms values and gender identities comparative literature comparative analysis of science fiction involves comparing works from different cultures and time periods to identify common themes and unique cultural perspectives so comparative literature is also one of the most flourishing field in our days what what does it do comparing analysis of science fiction works from different cultures like i said right at the very beginning that you are comparing science fiction written in africa with science fiction written in india then science fiction written in us you will find that there are similar elements as well as dissimilar elements so the dissimilarity does not mean that they are any less or they um, are not unique or they do not have unity dissimilarity actually um, enriches the field of experience uh, in the studies of science fiction right right so moving on to some key areas of focus in advanced uh, science fiction studies you can just have a look at it literary analysis historical context gender and identity post humanism and transhumanism utopian and dystopian societies cyberpunk and virtual realities global science fiction scenarios film and television studies afrofuturism so some of these concepts we have already talked about however some of the concepts we are yet to talk about so i will just pick up those concepts 
gender and identity we have discussed in very brief so i'm not going there anymore post humanism and transhumanism we have talked about this in some earlier lectures exploring the themes of post humanism and transhumanism in science fiction which consider the blurring boundaries between humans and technologies post humanism is the era when human beings are aided with body parts which are manufactured in an industry which are artificially made for example somebody who cannot uh, whose hand is cut off has been given an artificial arm and it can move according to the signals sent by this arm this arm is particularly attached to this human being somebody does not have a leg so the leg has been replaced with a machine leg which gets signals from the nerve endings from the body and does exactly what the leg would do these are some improvements that we have uh, been able to achieve when it comes to let's say prosthetic surgeries so now the human being is not a complete human being in the sense that it has something more than a human being has that is the facility of machines then again you have um, hearts artificial hearts uh, you have pacemakers pacemaker is a very common thing uh, which everybody uh, with heart disease or uh, the person who has uh, a tendency to stroke uh, or to suffer a heart stroke can on the doctor's prescription put inside his or her body so that thing is going to work um, and it will be a part of your system so it is not something which is natural and uh, it, that is why we have gone beyond the human intervention we are taking help of machines to make ourselves um, more comfortable our lives more comfortable from the inside from the outside you forget outside you have all sorts of electronic gadgets and uh, robots vacuum cleaners and all of those things but from the inside also we are um, getting a kind of uh, 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 an update an improvement or a help from the machine world from the science and technological world so transhumanism and posthumanism mostly deal with that kind of idea that if we are almost uh, taking help of machines to become human uh, fully functioning human being again what about our identity so that's another question utopia and dystopian societies we have discussed cyberpunk and virtual reality cyberpunk literature and its portrayal of virtual reality cybernetics and the impact of technology on human society you will be very happy or very surprised or very uh, amused to know that in most of the engineering colleges or universities there are they give a very common topic for group discussion internet addiction or the impact of social media on the society these are very you know two very common topics everybody knows and they have ready uh, materials to speak on that one is impact of social media on um, teenagers or on everybody and another um, is the other one which is internet addiction right so these two topics are mostly related to this cyberpunk and virtual reality kind of thing so if we talk about advanced studies we have to consider all of these materials next time global science fiction exploring science fiction from various cultures we have already talked about it Afrofuturism, examining the intersection of African and African diasporic cultures with science fiction, exploring themes of identity, history, and futurism. You must be aware of this. Wakanda. Wakanda is the place where this uh, Black Panther series is set. Wakanda is the most developed civilization on this planet. It is situated in Africa. Very ironically, because Africa is considered as the dark continent where no um, knowledge has been able to penetrate the um, civilization or the uh, unknowing, unaware minds of the people. But the idea of Wakanda completely contradicts this situation. So Africa is the new rising scenario of science fiction studies. So Afrofuturism is one of the things that we will consider in the advanced course. I'd like to end 
this entire discussion with a reference to one of my fa favorite science fiction movie that is the day the earth stood still which was released in 2018 actually there was an earlier movie of the same name and it was released in 1951 however this one uh, is the one i prefer directed by scott derrickson and inspired by farewell to the master by harry bates it is the story which inspired this entire movie an alien visitor named clatu played by keanu reeves who arrives on earth with a massive spherical spaceship along with him is a powerful humanoid robot named gort clatu is disappointed and frustrated with humanity's self-destructive behavior especially regarding environmental issues and nuclear weapons helen an astrobiologist is determined to help clatu and convince him that humanity is capable of change but her efforts are hindered by the government's paranoia and fear as events unfold clatu realizes that humanity's only hope lies in drastic action to save the planet he warns that earth is on the brink of environmental collapse and the consequences will have significant repercussions for the entire universe so this story is mostly based on the idea that science and technology has done a lot of good to this world however it has created problem for the environment it has created pollution which is harming the environment like anything and it has also created nuclear weapons which can destroy this planet if launched however clatu is a species a higher intelligence uh, carrying species from a different planet comes to earth to destroy it that i want to destroy earth first of all i want to send a message to the you know people ruling the earth that you are doing a grave mistake if you don't uh, reform your ways if you don't change whatever the decisions you are making regards to uh, damaging this planet you will be destroyed by our civilization because if you are going to destroy earth then the entire solar system will fall out of balance there will be repercussions in the universe we cannot risk that so clatu says that we are we have come to destroy you mend your ways but uh, you know government officials they do not listen to him and this and that happens but finally clatu is convinced that yes humanity still has hope humanity can mend its ways he leaves the planet he leaves the planet thinking uh, of humanity in a better way but while he leaves he destroys with his super power he destroys all the electronic gadgets on this planet he destroys the uh, way the uh, you know the planet has been utilizing uh, electricity and electronic devices he destroys everything and leaves that this will give everybody a chance to begin from the start quiz time so now we have some of the questions in front of us where you will be um requesting your own mental faculty to call or you know recall all the knowledge of the course that you have been studying so far how has the scope of science fiction studies evolved over time considering its representation in various literary genres like fiction poetry and drama what are the key elements that distinguish science fiction from other speculative genres and how do they influence its scope in different mediums including movies and tv shows what role does the visual medium play in shaping the scope of science fiction studies considering the impact of special effects world building and futuristic aesthetics in science fiction movies how does literary theories fit in interpretation of science fiction works how does study of science fiction add to the awakening of human beings to the threats human being pose to their own species on this planet this is a short list of references but let me tell you these are some of the best books and articles that you can have in order to prepare yourself for the advanced uh, science fiction course the seven beauties of science fiction by isvan uh, cesare rone scraps of the untainted sky science fiction utopia dystopia by thomas molan ishiguro's human uh, by shamin black then you have 
Terminal Identity, The Virtual Subject in Postmodern Science Fiction by Scott Bukatman. So all this time uh, have with you before you move on to the next science fiction course, ha have a look at all the references, just go through them once. You will have a better understanding of what science fiction studies stand for in the whole domain of knowledge on this planet. Thank you very much for being a part of this course. See you in the advanced course. Thank you.